Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button and keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Thursday, October 12th. Today, we're going to take a look at six stocks and talk about their short data and the chart that goes along with those stocks. Now, the three main things that I look for when I see if something could be, say, a short squeeze candidate are that the short interest is very high, 30s, 40s, or higher of percentage of the float, and then that the fee to borrow those shares to short the stock is high, at least high double digits, if not triple digits. That's when I get interested. And if you couple that with the availability of those shares to borrow being low, that helps. And then the third component, of course, is that the price of the stock is on the rise. So you have the price of the stock rising and going against the shorts. You have the shorts borrowing a very limited supply of available shares at a very high fee. And that all can sort of come together to cause the potential for a short squeeze. Even with those components, it's of course not a given, just like nothing is a crystal ball or 100%, but it at least provides the components of those things. Um, one other piece of data that you'll see here that also plays a role sometimes is how long short sellers are holding those for. So if they're holding those uh, shares for several days, if they're borrowing the shares for several days, and paying a very high fee, and the price of the stock is going against them, and there's a very limited supply of additional shares to short, then you can see how that can sort of back them into a corner over time that could result in a domino effect. So kicking things off with Novavax, um, the data that I got, um, the short interest ratio days and percentage, as well as the change, those are from MarketBeat. And then um, the fee that you see from today and the available shares is from iBorrowDesk. And then the chart is, of course, from Weeble. Now, double check any of this before you go in and take a look because, um, you know, just to make sure that nothing got screen grabbed wrong or attributed to the wrong stock or what have you. But as we have it here, NVAX, um, you see shorts holding for several days, incredibly high. Um, short uh, shares shorted as a percentage of the float. So over 47%, um, that's innately going to put some stress on the availability. Um, you see here the previous period. So this is reported twice. So you have like July 15th, um, July 31st, August 15th, August 31st, September 15th, September 30th. And so these are those are the five periods that you see here. Um, and we see, you know, starting back from here in July 15th, slight increases, some decent increases in here, and then basically a flat m movement into the end of September. Um, now, we also see a fee in the double digits, but very low double digits. So to me, that may not be enough to sort of, you know, throw uh, some red flags up and say, wow, this is an incredibly high fee with very limited supply. I do think the supply is probably pretty limited, but you also don't see a lot of movement throughout the day, today anyways. Um, and then with the chart, you know, I was sort of looking at what might be most relevant. Um, you know, if Novavax is going to continue to put pressure on the shorts, I would at a bare minimum want to see it holding well over seven. In other words, not dropping below this box here. And, you know, in a best or a better case scenario, that may give it some additional potential for um, squeezing out some of the shorts would be to rise this to about the mid eights or so. You know, if it could break through this box, this resistance level, see back here, previous support, uh, recent resistance, that could set off a chain of events um, that, like we say, sort of backs the shorts into a corner. But I would want to see this fee come up in conjunction with that um, if that's really going to play a, a critical, critical role. Hey, folks, just so you know, you can get these videos early and ad-free if you click on the description below and become a member 
you can make that happen and I really appreciate the support. Thanks a lot, enjoy the rest of the video. Moving on to AI, uh, this is C3.AI, never heard of this company, but it's irrelevant. Um, it has a few days that uh, shorts are holding these shares or borrowing these shares, uh, a little over 31% shorted at the moment, so pretty high. Um, you see the four, uh, sorry, six periods here. I can't count. Um, so it was decreasing there a few periods ago and then has bumped back up. And so it's a little bit of, of a wave here, a little up and down, a little herky-jerky. Um, but you see in the midst of all that, the fee is incredibly low, just 6.6%. You know, that's probably not warding off many, if any, short sellers from jumping in and and continuing to short the stock. So that may be why, you know, they're holding for several days or, you know, we may even see that number increase. Um, we do see some action is currently happening today. Some additional shares are being borrowed to short the stock. Now, to me on the chart, the most important thing for AI, if it were to put some pressure on the shorts, would be to stop. You see here when it, these are the EMAs. Uh, so a few uh, periods back, this is on the daily chart, it was able to make a run at the mid-range here, the 21 EMA. Um, and then it got trapped under the 8, and that's when it really sold off hard. And then now just in recent days, it's trying to regain the 8 and even made a push up toward the 34. So that's something that we haven't seen in quite some time. So that's of interest to me. Now today, it's struggling quite a bit to hold the 8, but that's sort of the test, right? It's come up, hit higher resistance than you have in recent periods, um, and then come down and retest to see if you truly have support where you need it. And where it needs it is over that 8 EMA. Um, and then it will need it over the 21, right? And so that's how it sort of gradually ticks through there. So if it's able to do that, it's interesting to me. If it comes down and gets trapped below the 21 or certainly below the 8 again, um, and this was just sort of like a blip on the radar screen, then that's uh, not going to be, give me a lot of confidence that the price is going to be able to move um, against the shorts in any meaningful way. Now, there is a gap here uh, as well that sits quite a bit higher from the current price, at least percentage-wise. Um, and you can see it's only partially filled. This wick uh, filled some of it. And even then, it's just uh, just the wick, not even the candle body, really. In that gap. So, to the extent to which that gap has fill potential, you know, that could be something to maybe keep an eye out for as well. WHLR is getting beat up pretty bad today, I believe. I mean, this has been quite a wild ride. You see these huge jumps in volume, uh, just a couple of them, but where it's sitting right now, um, days to cover, really low, percentage of the float on the high end of things for sure. So that's sort of in line. You see huge jumps here, right? In a couple of periods back, some huge jumps following some periods of decreasing uh, percentage of the float being shorted. Um, and then a pretty decent size decrease recently. But if you weight that against how huge of an uptick there, there was during those periods, you know, it's really a, a sort of a fraction of the import of the increase of those shorts. So it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag here. High percentage, not seeming to hold very long, but really piling in as of late and not really peeling back in any meaningful way. Now, additionally here, which makes it very interesting, availability getting super low on iBorrowDesk. Um, and the fee is very high, 400s uh, of a percent in, at least as of today. So, you know, that fee is certainly in line with something that could get super interesting. Um, the recent uptick, even with the most recent downturn, you know, definitely interesting. This is in line. Um, this may be impacted by the fee. Um, they may not be able to hold these super long because the fee is so, so crazy high. Now on the chart, I noted a couple of things. One here, the EMA cloud, um, or is it not a cloud, the EMAs, it's going to have to overcome this 8 EMA. It's going to have to get support of that if it wants to, to make any sort of meaningful uh, contribution to the bulls, <laughs> if you will. Um, and then there is this uh, potential, potential sort of support level 
here right around 91, um, I would keep an eye on that and see, you know, sort of how that plays out. Um, we have, you know, this this low here of 8179, um, but we have some interesting movement here. It's only on three candles and three candle bodies, so it's not a ton. It's pretty thin um, information to go off of, but, um, you know, if it does have the ability to build off of that, it could at least give it a run at the eight, which you saw here where it pushed off of it and maybe give it another attempt. If it, sh if it shrugs that uh, potential support level off, then, you know, obviously that's out of play and, and just sort of like all bets are off at that point. Who knows? It's going to dip below that 81.79. And at that point, you know, I would just personally would rely on the EMAs to try to guide me to anything that looked like an attempted run back toward them. But super interesting because of, of the fee um, and this huge change uh, in recent periods. RAD also I think is pretty interesting. This one because it actually is getting some good price action, but let's start where we started with the others. Uh, you know, holding for a couple of days, you know, the percentage of the float is in line. And then we do see, we saw a big peel back here a few periods ago, relatively flat here, but then we see a bunch of big increases, certainly superseding that drawback, um, percentage-wise anyway. We don't know exactly what the figures were there from the information I have here, but percentage-wise, um, that's certainly the case. Availability getting very low here on iBorrow Desk. You see just 25K, um, but not a lot of movement, but there's not a lot to move um, unless there's going to be some shares returned. Fee closing in on 200, that gets pretty interesting. You know, it's not the 400 that we saw on Wheeler, but 200 could certainly do the job, especially if um, Rite Aid is able to get some significant bullish momentum going here. And these EMAs are telling an interesting story at the moment. It's sort of coming to a, a critical point here on the chart. You see it tried to capture that 34 EMA yesterday. Strong top wick. Um, heavy candle body here, but then today putting in a relatively hammerish looking candle. We'll see how that sort of um, pans out and trying to hold support over the 8 EMA, which if it can, especially if it can with, withhold this um, top heavy candle body, uh, that may drag that 8 EMA over the 24, or sorry, over the 21 EMA, giving it a first bullish crossover. And, you know, we have a nice motion here. And so even if it comes down and tests support here, I'm not worried about that dip to test support, but I am curious what it does when it tests support. If it slips the support and turns it to resistance, then you have a problem if you're a bull. And if it can hold that support and start to turn these EMAs into some bullish crossover motion, then you have something that could get really interesting really quickly with a fee this high, with an availability this low, and the percentage being so high up here. ENVX. Um, <laughs> shorts holding on for a very long time here, apparently, if that market beat data is correct. Um, 30.65, so that's in line with a high a percentage of the float being shorted. Uh, relatively flat here, you know, percentage wise in the change in the periods, um, but, you know, certainly more increasing than decreasing. Availability, certainly not uh, near the low, low, low levels that we've seen on some of the other stocks, and that fee is less than 1%, so that's not going to do much of any good warding off any shorts because the fee uh, in and of itself. So to my mind, ENVX is going to have to do the price action. It's going to have to draw in additional shorts, um, you know, driving this even higher, potentially driving this even lower. And then maybe the combo of that driving this even higher. But it's going to have to do that, I think, probably by making some, you know, bullish moves to try to draw them in. And the way that it's going to need to do that is there's a little bit of an uptrend support here that's really only taken off of two or three candles. So I'm really reluctant to say that that's much of anything that could give way really easily and really quickly. So I'm not going to put too much stock in that, but it is there if it continues to follow that motion in the days to come. Now, really strong story here from the EMAs, right? You have the bearish cross over here and then a confirmation of resistance off of the 34 EMA. 
right here, and that just led to further sell-off, pretty big gap down here. Um, and, and then, you know, recent attempt at the 21 EMA. So here's the problem. You see it, it, it attempted the 34 EMA, wicked off of there, or rejected off of there, and then at, at its next attempt at resistance, it couldn't get to the 34. It could only get to the 21 rejected off of there, and now it's stuck at the eight. So now the question is, if it can't get even to the 21 on this run, this is why this is an, an important moment for ENVX. If it can't even get to the same attempt of the EMA 21, then I would really have a hard time getting much confidence in the price action ability to rise um, and, and to follow this trend line, much less you know get a significant spike um, in a way that really puts any pressure on the shorts at all. So if it can, great, but right now that is my biggest question. Can it even come test the 21 EMA or not? And Nova, uh, big hold here, 6.6, .6, so pretty high uh, percentage of the float being shorted over 30, so those are all in line. Uh, relatively flat here. You had some increases a few periods ago, and you know certainly more increases than decreases, but nothing like tremendously high. Um, and similar, similarly down here, availability is you know okay, um, not super strict or stringent. And then the fee is basically nothing, one percent. Um, like I said before, it's probably not going to ward off a bunch of shorts to have to pay a one percent fee to borrow those shares. Now here's the potential that I see for Nova if it can continue to put in some good price action here. It could be closing in on two daily candles above the, or at least holding the 8 EMA. That could give it some swing potential, um, but it needs to be able to come up and test this 34. We see in the last attempt, it hit resistance twice. You know, if we count, this is a swing and this is a swing. Those two attempts rejected off of the 21 EMA. Um, and then here we're hitting it again. Right, so this would be the time I think if it's going to, to try to get through that 21 EMA and push to 34, and even if it rejects off the 34, that might give it the opportunity to sort of solidify that support over the 8 EMA and then continue to build the price action over this uptrend line, um, and and try to get some bullish crossovers, the 8 crossing above the 21 and then above the 34, so on and so forth, which could give it the potential to rise the price like you saw over here when everything unfurled in a bullish fashion. Um, I do see that 1282 as a potential very sticky zone, even if it can get up there. You know, if it were able to break through there, um, you know, you're going to have another sticky level up here, but that one looks like the most critical level if it's even able to get up there um, for it to get over and gain support at that 1282 level. That would give me some you know, much needed confidence from a bull's perspective, um, you know, if I were to be looking at Nova. All right, folks, I hope that your trading week has been going well and that you finish it off strong tomorrow. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.